fusion within stars, like our Sun, then produces a form of energy called electromagnetic radiation. These are oscillating waves of photons, or particles of light. On Earth and in space, electromagnetic radiation consists of a spectrum of energy. On the low end are radio waves, with low frequencies and very long wavelengths. On the high end of the electromagnetic spectrum are gamma rays, with high frequencies and extremely short wavelengths. Each photon of electromagnetic radiation takes up to 150,000 years to actually get from the center of the sun to the surface before it can escape and head towards Earth. Luckily for us, our atmosphere blocks most of the dangerous wavelengths of electromagnetic energy, which are ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays, from reaching our world. But it allows visible light, infrared, and radio waves to pass through. Light and infrared energies are absorbed by land masses and oceans, and then converted to heat energy. The sun is continually emitting electromagnetic radiation, which is giving us heat energy here on Earth and in space. Humans have found clever ways to harness the energy of the universe. We've learned to transform solar radiation into heat, as well as electrical energy. One of the most common technologies we use to harness the power of sunlight is solar panels. Solar panels are usually made out of semiconductors, which are light sensitive. So when sunlight hits the silicon solar array, it generates charges. Those charges are then swept out of the semiconductor material, and that generates an electrical current. Electricity can be generated from one solar cell, or a solar farm, holding 550,000 solar panels. And those currents can charge everything from a home to a hot sports car. Woo! <laughs> Stars are awesome transformers of energy. Here on Earth, we're constantly bombarded with the sun's electromagnetic energy in the form of light. In turn, we convert it into other energies to power some of the most unlikely things in our everyday world. We're here at Tesla Motors today to see how electromagnetic energy can be converted into mechanical energy, which is used to power this high-end sports car here. All it takes is simple electricity from your average wall socket. So if we plug the car in, like so, we're now taking energy from the wall socket and we're using it to charge up the car's battery. And the battery, located right here, is used to run the car's electric motor. So the computer inside the car, which is right here, takes energy from the battery and uses it to turn the single electric motor, which powers the car at astonishing speeds, actually. So you can imagine if you had, say, solar panels on top of your house and you were to plug the car in, your car would literally be running off of sunlight. All right, here we go. Transforming sunlight into electricity has its advantages. Electric vehicles accelerate faster than gas vehicles because electric motors provide full torque immediately, while gas engines have to rev up. The Tesla here can do 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds, and that makes it faster than just about any other production gasoline-powered car there is. This just illustrates the great power of electromagnetic energy. Isn't science fun? Our sun is responsible for fueling almost everything in our world by transforming its energies from one useful form to yet another. Green plants convert solar energy into chemical energy through photosynthesis, which feeds all living things, including humans. I get energy from my corn flakes because the corn in the flakes got their energy from photosynthesis of sunlight that converts sunlight into sugar, carbohydrates. All kinds of molecules have bonds between the atoms in the molecules that when they break, release energy and give us the energy that we need when we exercise. 
And this life cycle of energy doesn't end here. Over millions of years, the decomposed remains of dead plants and animals are compressed underground and converted into fossil fuels. They come in many forms, including coal, petroleum, and methane. When we burn oil or natural gas, we're really liberating the energy from sunshine that was collected by plants thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago and stored underground in uh, fossil fuel repositories. Fossil fuels are considered non-renewable resources. This doesn't mean their energy is completely destroyed, but that they can't be replenished naturally in a short period of time. When we talk about non-renewable energy sources, like, say, burning fossil fuels, we don't mean that energy is gone from the universe. What we mean is that that energy source has been transformed into a form that's no longer useful, like, say, for example, waste heat. The sun provides much of the energy essential for our survival. But this energetic powerhouse can also produce lethal energies. November 2006. NASA's Swift Observatory witnesses a frightening event. The largest stellar flare ever observed releases energy equal to 50 million trillion atomic bombs. The killer flare fires energy in the form of X-rays that would obliterate most life on Earth if it came from our sun. Fortunately for us, this radiation came from the star Il Pagasi, which is 135 light years away. Even so, this incident illustrates the deadly energy being released from stars, including our sun. A solar flare is a relatively sudden release of a tremendous amount of energy. This energy comes from magnetic energy, a bunch of tangled magnetic fields suddenly release this radiated energy. It can be thought of as a bunch of stretched, twisted rubber bands. That's the magnetic field lines. And eventually they just snap. And that snapping releases the energy and channels it outwards from a relatively localized region on the sun's surface. Solar flares can reach as much as 15 million degrees because it's converting magnetic energy into heat energy, and massive amounts of magnetic energy into that heat energy. Solar flares can occur several times a day during high solar activity. When they're erupting, each flare can produce as much thermal energy in a few minutes as the entire sun produces in one second. If some of the high energy charged particles generated by solar flares are headed in our direction, they'll be deflected by another energy source, the Earth's magnetic field. It's produced by electric currents that flow in its molten core. These currents are hundreds of miles wide and move at thousands of miles per hour as the Earth rotates. This powerful magnetic field passes through the Earth and enters space. The Earth's magnetic field stops or deflects most of the charged particles that come at us from the sun or from interstellar space. And this is a really good thing because it would be really bad for life on Earth if a lot of these very high energy particles made it to the ground and were to hit our bodies. A massive star can send off flares for 10 billion years. And when the star nears death, it doesn't mark the end of the transformation of extreme energy. In fact, it's just the beginning. Once you have the beginning of a star where it does start the nuclear fusion, then the nuclear fusion continues on and it will burn until all the hydrogen is used up, basically. Deprived of the nuclear energy to support itself, a massive dying star finally collapses, igniting a supernova explosion. 